it's uh, kind of an insult to some people, if you must, and because they don't understand what we're trying to do. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. The iconic Canadian prog rock band Saga has just released a new album on which they completely redefine some of their classic and some lesser known songs. I sat down with long running member Jim Gilmore to talk all about it. I see the problem start. Jim, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, especially given that tomorrow is your, if I may say, your 63rd birthday. Actually, it is today. Oh, it today is today. Is my birthday. Tomorrow, I was, I, I, I couldn't do it tomorrow because I'm going, you know, doing stuff tomorrow. Well, this congratulations. Really... Happy birthday. Ah, thanks. So, this I mean, there's, because of what's going on in the world, there, there's not much for me to do anyway. So, this is fine with me. <laughs> awesome. I mean, did um, when you when you joined back in the day in the late seventies, nineteen eighty, um, did you ever think at that time that you would still be promoting new saga releases when you were in your sixties? <laughs> no, I thought I would. I thought I'd be in the band for six months, and then <laughs> something else would come along. I didn't know. <laughs> You know, people that have been following the band might be thinking, wait a minute, wasn't there a whole retirement and um, farewell tour in 2017? Um, so is this, should fans get their hopes up that uh, th there's a second wind or a new wind in the sails of Saga? Or is this a uh, more of a one-time uh, project semi-retired band? Um who knows? But uh, I mean, all I know, I know that I've been writing new material for whatever project comes up. So that's what's been keeping me busy all year. So, and uh, and the symmetry, the symmetry album just seemed like a fun thing to do and something. And we've always done things differently. So uh, it it just was a natural thing to do. And, yeah, 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 and I love the album. I, I think we did. I think we we worked really hard on it, and it's yeah. pretty different. <laughs> you know, symmetry. The new album. It's a. I'm gonna call it a reimagination of um, of, of classic songs. Um, yeah. Some of the biggest hits. Some 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 more uh, unknown songs as well. For a band like you guys, who have always, you know, been pretty, you know, stable in releasing uh, albums over the decades, how do you even start to select songs for a project like this in, in such a massive back catalog? I mean, I understand you want to balance some of the fan favorites, but maybe also some challenges for the band. How, how did you go about that? Um, well, we just threw name like for for. One one thing is that on the last tour Jim was on, we did we opened for ourselves, and we we and at first people didn't know it was us. So of course after the first couple of gigs people did. So a lot of some of the songs we did live, opening for ourselves as pockets ended up on this album, and we were thinking and we did record every night and we were thinking. Oh, we could release just a live album of this, but there's so much stuff to go through and, you know, with acoustic instruments, there's tuning issues and this, that, why don't we just do a proper album? So that's, that's what we did. And, we, and the, and the other songs that we didn't play live, we just threw songs along, you know, around and we agreed on yes, no, or and we still have a couple that are arranged that that, we, that didn't make this album. They're just, you know, too okay. much. So, potential bonus tracks for part two of this. Uh, yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about that because, um, like I said, uh, often when um, when a band announces an acoustic album, 
um, that that usually translates, especially in the hard rock world, into very stripped down songs, almost you know reducing them to, with all respect, campfire versions of, yeah, of a song. Yeah, yeah. That is not what you guys did. That is not stripped at all. In fact, there is a lot going on and there is a lot to explore. Um, was was that a, you mentioned we, we are people that always do it a little bit different anyways. Um, is that something that for you guys was um, the goal to, to really find a different world for these songs well well it took it took some thinking and and jim and i were talking okay originally the record company wanted to do like a a string quartet and then so i actually worked on a couple of arrangements and then that just sounds like whatever what you just said what everyone else does so and jim says why don't we get an amazing fiddle player and like Jerry Goodman or something and do something really different and, and uh, you know, show, show the musicianship side again. And mm -hmm. so that's pretty much how that came about. You know, creating these new versions with so many different things going on that gives obviously the listeners and the fans a lot of a lot of good stuff to play with to go and explore and, and discover uh, things. Um, is that also a little bit the idea behind the uh, the artwork of the album? On the cover, we've got a, a library that you know is, is breaking open into a different world. I, I take that as a you know to represent the the rediscovery uh, of the world of Saga through exploring these old songs. What Am I seeing that right, or or what? What is uh, the story? Maybe there? I mean I I didn't really have much to do with the artwork, but but those the, the library and things were part of our stage set for uh, the, two, the the Jim's last tour. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. kind of just got incorporated. But yeah, now that you mentioned it, it does kind of lend itself to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mentioned it, Jim's last tour. Um, he's not, not not part of this project uh, anymore. Um, how is that? How different is this? Has has this you know whole you know um, uh, writing or uh, scoring or rescoring and recording and releasing cycle? How how different is that experience for you? Well, I mean, Jim and I we talk almost every day, and. Um, were, he's still, he was still kind of the the guy that brought this whole project together. Okay. And um, yeah, we worked on it hard and I went to his place, spent weeks at his place and um, that's where I recorded my clarinet parts and my vocals and accordion and piano. So I spent a lot of time with him and, and uh, yeah, and I told him we were doing an interview today and he phoned me on my birthday and tomorrow I'll phone him on his birthday. So his is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the videos that we've seen so far also seem to be, you know, homages to uh, original songs and the history of the band. Is that something that um, we're going to see more with uh, with with symmetry, are there both from a musical or from a conceptual piece? Is there is is are there going to be more on the nose or more hidden Easter eggs for the fans to delve into and go and look for? Uh, I think this album is uh, definitely something. I mean, I've had all sorts of comments, and it's not. There's so much going on that you can't just listen to it once and go. But you know, a lot of the a lot of people like the songs the way they were. So it, it's uh, kind of an insult to some people, if you must, and because they don't understand what we're trying to do. But uh, I'm hoping that they'll just take a new 
fresh look at it like the way we did and appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. what we've done with it. So. Still keeping up a pace like that. Tight bound clock. Was that regardless um, a scary thing to do for the band to go through? Oh that yeah, I, I, for sure. I knew uh, I knew people would love it, and I also knew people wouldn't. So, but so far it's been, I would say, ninety percent positive, and reviews from magazines and everything have been really, really good. Is are you guys working on you know uh, plans for to take? to take this these new versions on the road in their proper right not being the 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 opener to the to, to the other set if you will not at the moment i mean we are planning starting a tour in june in europe but that's that'll be just the normal band and with dusty chesterfield on bass and he's also from toronto yeah. and um, and we plan on if everything goes well and things open up but they are planning it as for the acoustic album that would have to be a whole different entity because we'd have to bring in other people obviously to play and and obviously i can't play accordion and clarinet and piano all at the same time so there would have to be other people you know so so yeah that that would be a, another undertaking and you never know yeah 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 I mean, there's no, um, it, it's maybe no surprise that that tour, you know, uh, starts as a European tour. Um, because um, I, you mentioned before we started recording that um, Saga's popularity in certain areas of Europe, especially Germany, um, has been um, co sometimes very different uh, than, than North America or in Canada um, yeah. itself. Can you explain or, or, or do you have a reason why Germany, for as an example, has always well, I, embraced Saga so well. Well, how do you explain Puerto Rico? Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, at Germany, Puerto Rico, and then uh, Jim was doing an interview the other day with a, a Cuban Cuban guy who moved to Spain. And he said we're huge in Cuba, yeah. and we never knew that because you're not allowed to go there and like, play and stuff like that. So. I have no idea. I mean, things just happen. You know, some yeah, yeah. bands are huge in Japan and not anywhere else. And yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is kind of it, it is an, it is a nice thought to see that uh, people in Puerto Rico and in Germany who could not be more different um, yeah. still can be united in in such a very specific way. Um, yeah, and a lot of people have met through us. I mean. Couples have got married and that have met as Saga fans, and it's pretty, pretty neat. With all these different influences, with all these different styles, with all these different instruments, um, how how have you guys been able to um, kind of make sure that this teamwork uh, has been working well for such a long time? Well. For one thing, we're all friends, you know, so we're all, we're good friends and okay, all friends have falling out and they fight and stuff, but deep down, we're all friends and have been for a long time. And I, I think that's mainly what keeps it going. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't want to be in a band where I didn't like somebody, you know? So. Sure. Hey! I mean, you can you can see on uh, hockey teams like the uh, Maple Leafs when there when certain players aren't getting along, you can sure tell. Yeah, Last yeah, night yeah. they seemed like they were getting along a little better. <laughs> so uh, uh, a, a, a long-lasting Leaf fan. Oh yeah. All of the band because I know that in, in in Canada that can that can break up relationships like that. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and our. Uh, our old lighting man, he was a huge Montreal fan, so we'd always be arguing. And our new sound man is a huge Boston Bruins fan. So. Ooh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, I need to ask, um, and, and if that is the case, then, then shame on me for not knowing, but, uh, you know, Leafs, Gilmore, uh, any relation? <laughs> 
Uh, I used to I used to play that up. when he was playing. I used to play that up all the time. <laughs> Even on Q107, Gilmore had just gotten married, and I told him that he was my uncle, and uh, <laughs> they believed me. And he didn't invite me to the wedding. No, we're not. Uh, Probably way back in history we're related. Yeah, but, somehow, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Jim, I just want to say thank you again uh, for your time. I appreciate that, especially on your birthday. Um, mm -hmm. I wish you the best Swiss chalet dinner and <laughs> maybe a couple of local craft beers um, <laughs> to celebrate. And then, um, yeah, looking forward to the uh, to the, to rediscovering all these classic songs. Uh, in a and few maybe weeks. next time we're playing in Toronto, let me know. We'll meet meet up. Let's uh, let's hope that the day that we have live shows in Toronto again yeah. comes uh, very very soon. Uh, thank you so much. Absolutely, we'll do so. Uh, look forward to the new release and thank you for your time. Okay, man. Cheers. You were awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.